All right, hello and welcome to our recording for today's lesson. We're continuing in section 4.3 on slope. I'm briefly going to show these slides here. Um, we did already look at these during our last class, um, but we kind of had to end partway through the lesson. So I'd like to remind you we're talking about slope, which we sometimes refer to as a rate of change or rise over run. And then we also use these Greek uh, letters delta, delta y over delta x to show slope. That means change, change in y over the change in x. Finally, we briefly touched on the slope formula. Notice that the letter m is used here. Frequently, we use m for slope. Um, it's, it's just sort of happened that way. This single number contains a lot of information. It describes how steep your line is, where it's going, and whether it's going up or down, that kind of thing. Uh, we talked a little bit about the slope of this graph. It has a rise of four and a run of six. So its slope was change in y over change in x. It was four over six. Oh, let me grab the pen. There we go. It was four over six, which does reduce to two thirds. I don't know if I showed you in this class, but you can actually go a run of three and a rise of two, and you would also create a slope triangle that lands back on the line. So is it a slope of four over six or is it a slope of two over three? They're the same. It's just the two over three is reduced and simpler. So you can um, pause this if you need to and recapture these notes as needed. Let's continue. We also were able to get to this slide last class where we classified different types of lines according to their slopes. So you can see we have a positive slope, a negative slope, horizontal, which is called a zero slope, and then vertical, which is called an undefined slope. So those are the four kinds of slopes that uh, we were able to capture in our notes last time. Were there any questions on any of these before we move forward? Ryder, was that a question? Or? So what we're going to do now, oh, Elota. Yeah, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's do that with an example. I'm going to, I don't know if it's the next slide, but I am going to find an example that lets us work with the slope formula and show you how that one works. That's kind of what we ran out of time to do and why we didn't start the assignment um, last lesson. So yeah, this will be a great example here. So uh, the problem says you're going to an internet cafe um, and you're spending some money to use the internet. So for every hour, or it looks like every two hours in the table that goes by, we're spending uh, $7. And I suppose this might be strange. Why are we talking about an internet cafe? What is that? Um, but you might actually use one one day if you're traveling um, in, in a country where you maybe don't have access to your phone, your phone isn't connected, um, and you don't have internet where you're staying. You, you would go into the nearest internet cafe and be able to use a computer that's connected to the internet. So back in the good old days too, they used to have like arcades, used to also have some internet cafes, like because not everybody had good enough internet to do gaming. So people would come in to do gaming online in an internet cafe. It was a very small window of time, but that happened. Do they still do that? Oh, okay. Is that for like super immersive virtual experiences? Cool. I mean, in some like super urban areas too, it just makes sense to have a variety of spaces for people to go do stuff like that because they can't fit it all in their house if their house is tiny. All right. So. The way that we've done this before with tables is, we, is we've kind of just eyeballed it. And we've said, how much is that changing? And we say, OK, it's going up by 2. So uh, what we just found, time is almost always our input variable. So it, what we just found was that our change in x is 2. For the cost, 
that's changing as well, and it's also going up. Every time it's going up by 7. That would be what we would think of as our output variable, like y. So we'd say our change in y is 7. So as every two hours it goes by, I'm paying 7 more dollars. So my rate of change or my slope, I'll use m. m is the change in y over the change in x, which is equal to 7 halves. And you could write that as 3.5 if you wanted to, $3.50 uh, for every hour. When you're doing a word problem that has a context like a context like this one, we do usually take money and write it as a decimal. Um, so most of the time, I prefer my fraction. But for a word problem like this, we'll go with a decimal value. What's up, Knight? Yeah, we may have already done this one problem. Cost is three dollars and fifty cents every hour by the way if i'm writing with this stylus it's not perfect right so if you could bear with me on some of the typing there some of the calligraphy better delta delta oh yeah. So in our problem, delta x was 2, because that's the change in x. So it's the change in x. And delta y was 7, the change in the y. Yeah. So let's talk about the slope formula. That's I know we haven't really touched on that yet. How could we use the slope formula for this problem? And in general, you need to get comfortable with the slope formula. We are going to be using it quite a lot. It's a little bit cleaner than, than having to work with tables and stuff. So if I take two points. One of those is going to be like my first point, and I gotta I gotta look at my slope formula really quickly and make sure I am consistent with how I presented it. Okay, y two minus y one. So I might have my first point be two comma seven, and then my second point would be, oh sorry, two comma, yeah, two comma seven, and my second point would be four comma fourteen. So to use the slope formula, change in y over the change in x is equal to y2 minus y1. That's how you measure the change in cost. And then you divide that by the corresponding change in time, x2 minus x1. So here, here we go. Ready? This is the slope formula. I take my y2, the y value of my second point, which is 14. And I subtract the y value from my other point, y1, which is 7. That's going to be my change in y. No surprise, the change in y is 7. We kind of already eyeballed that one and figured it out earlier. The change in y is 7. For the x, I take the x-coordinate from my second point, 4, and subtract the x-coordinate from my first point, 2, 4 minus 2, is 2. So my change in x is 2. Again, not a surprise. When we looked at the table, we sort of already could estimate the change in x. We saw that it was 2. It was going up by 2. Of course, it's not always so easy to just see that. And so this formula is going to be really helpful when, as we get into more and more challenging problems. So that's how we apply the formula to find slope. Any questions about the formula for this problem? Two and x are are uh, sorry. Two and four are both x values. That's true. And fourteen and seven are both y values. And notice how careful you have to be. You can't do fourteen minus seven and then do two minus four. That would be wrong. You can't do seven minus fourteen and then do. 4 minus 2, that would be wrong. You have to keep the order very careful that your order is preserved, and you need to keep only y's in the numerator and only x values in the denominator. Very important. Um, I could easily see a homework quiz that I give you have an error analysis where I set up the formula wrong, and it's your job to tell me what's wrong with the formula because we make mistakes with it a lot. 
Okay, so here's an example that's begging for the slope formula. Let's work through this one together. I'll wait a moment for you to write it down. We're going to find the slope between these two points. And I'll just note, you could make a graph. You could bust out some graph paper, and you could, um, you could plot these two points and try and figure out the slope. And maybe I'll show you how to do it on Desmos in a little bit. But for right now, I'm going to focus on using the slope formula. All right. So I have the two points. I have the point 1, comma, 3 and the point negative 2, comma, 5. Did everybody write those two points down? Anybody need more time? OK. I'm going to treat this. Well, it, don't, it doesn't matter in a big way, but I'm going to treat this like my x1, y1. And this is going to be my second point, x2, y2. I'll just, doesn't it make sense that you need two points to define a rate of change? If you want to know how fast something is moving, you have to, you have to figure out its position at one moment. You have to wait with a stopwatch for some more time to go by and then figure out the position again. You need two positions at two different times to measure something's speed. So when we're finding slope, we need two different points to define the slope. Plugging this into the formula, somebody want to help me out with my numerator? What would it be? Thomas? The formula has a minus in it. OK, does that? go in the numerator or in the denominator? The denominator. OK, so for my denominator, I agree with you. It would be negative 2 minus 1. Somebody help me with my numerator. Thomas is ready. Anybody else? What would go in my numerator? Right? Five, three. What goes between them? The formula indicates it. The formula has the math that you need. Minus, yeah. We're taking a difference. And if you want to know how much something has changed, it makes sense to take a difference. If you want to know how much a plant grew in the last year, you would take the height it is now, and then you would subtract the height that it was before. When you measure a difference, sorry, when you measure for growth, you do subtract. That's how we measure growth. All right, so simplifying. 5 minus 3 is 2. Uh, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. I'm going to bring that negative out in front. It is a negative 2 thirds slope. Uh, negative 2 thirds slope. So this thing has a rock. It's going down 2 and over 3, down 2 over 3. So the slope would look something like that. What was that? That's right. If you want to measure how much the height has changed, you measure the final height and subtract the initial height. That's actually subtraction, believe it or not. Because you know when to stop. All right. I'm going to show you real quick what this looks like in Desmos. So let me bring Desmos up. Mm, OK, I got to move the tab. Gosh, this feels way too much like remote learning. OK, there we go. And there's the problem. So I'm going to plot these points. You could do it with a table. I'm actually going to just put the point at 1, 3. There it is. It pops up right there. There's the point. Next, I have the point negative 2, 5. This was the example we were working through, negative 2, comma, 5. So there they are. And 
just kind of thinking, okay, does a slope of down two over three make sense? And I think that it does. Um, let's see, it's gonna be hard for me to, to draw on this screen, but will there's a, where there's a will, there's a way. View transparent background, there we go. Okay, so it goes down. Oh, let me grab the pen. One more time. There we go. It goes down one, two. Down two. Over one, two, three. Over three. So there you have it. It's a slope. The slope of the line that goes through these points is minus two thirds. And we show that using the slope formula. Are there any questions on this example? All right. Um, I think I have just one more. Oh, this was set up as an exit task. So this, this is something we would have all had to have done before I released you onto the assignment. For now, given the circumstances, I think we'll just do this together. Anybody object? All right, let's go ahead and do this together. I've got two different points and I want to find the slope. Using the slope formula, I know it's the difference in my y values over the difference in my x values. I'm going to think of this as my x2, y2, this point, and this one as my x1, y1. It actually doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So in that case, my numerator would be y2 minus y1, 8 minus 4. My denominator would be negative 3 minus a negative 2. It's a lot of negatives. I hope you keep track of all these negatives because the formula has subtraction in it. The numerator simplifies to 8 minus 4 is 4. And the denominator, well, that's negative 3 minus negative 2. Recall that subtracting a negative, that's like doing the opposite of taking away. When it's minus negative, that's like adding. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. So if I were to look at these two points, the slope that goes between them would be down 4 over 1. I guess for you, it's down 4 over 1 like that. There, there you go. That's calculating slope. So I have an assignment for you uh, that really, more than anything else, I ask you to find a lot of different slopes. And then I push you a little bit to, with I introduce some variables that are unknown, an unknown coordinate of the point. Can you figure out what the slope should be? If you get stuck at any point in this assignment, I suggest you bust out a piece of graph paper and you try and look at the two points, graph them, and see if you can visualize the slope between the two points. Otherwise, I want you practicing the slope formula as much as possible. So I'm going to call the recording there. Although I, I hid the tool to turn it off. <laughs> and now I don't know where it is. So there we are. Okay. Bye, everyone.